Hi, my name is Chris Hannant, and this is my super spontaneous audition tape casting video for The Amazing Race. You're probably asking where my partner is, and that's a great question. We're actually about to go sneak up on him right now. He's on the beach. He doesn't know we're about to do this, but he just called me because um, he wants to go spearfishing. This isn't totally spontaneous. We've been talking about doing this for months now and haven't done it, so we're doing it now. He's right out here on the beach somewhere. So we're gonna go get him and just start this thing. That's him. Matthew! This is our audition tape. That's Matt. <laughs> we're doing it! <laughs> All right. What are you doing? What are you drinking? Typical. So we're from the Outer Banks of North Carolina on the East Coast and I run a production company called Swell Productions. I do some documentary stuff and some surf videos and I shoot weddings and it's ironic because I know how to use cameras but I'm filming this handheld on a GoPro in 60p. Matt, what do you do? I manage a local restaurant that my parents own. I've been working there for about 10 years now, and now I'm starting to manage it. I'm starting to learn how to run it. It's going to be his soon. Matt's also getting married soon, so we're pretty excited about that. To a Swedish girl that we actually met in China. Her name's Frida. She's wonderful. She'll be very happy if we win a million dollars, which we will, because we're pretty much a traveling dream team. So me and Chris both had the kind of the travel bug in college, so we made summer plans, I think it was two consecutive years, to go to Costa Rica together. Uh, the first year we went with my girlfriend at the time and her sister, and the second time we went just me and Chris. Uh, we did three weeks there and drove around. Yeah, we've been super lucky. I mean, we live in a place where people are really open to travel. It's not, I feel like a lot of America's pretty closed-minded when it comes to travel, and not a lot of people do it, or they're scared, or they're just apprehensive in some way or they think it's dangerous or not doable but around here a lot of people do it especially because we all surf it's such a big surf culture which a lot of people travel to do that which in turn kind of leads to other travels but then our big trip that changed well changed Matt's life forever because that's where he met his current fiance was we did uh, four and a half months in Southeast Asia and we started in China Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, Thailand, and that was... Indonesia. And Indonesia, yeah. And then we've done Indo. A few times since then. Yeah, we kept going back there, but it's always kind of been to, to surf. It's always kind of revolved around surfing or diving. And I think the amazing race would be sick because it would be, it would just be so different. It would be, be different for us. It'd be very different for us. You have to learn how to travel. The first time you travel, you're kind of figuring things out. You don't really know what to do. It's di it's different. It's it's outside of your comfort zone. It's a lot of things you're not used to, whether it's a language barrier or even just, I mean, getting a train in China was like the most complicated <laughs> thing ever. So there's a lot of learning involved and we, we figured it out. We, we know how to do it, but we know how to do it within our realm of what's fun or what a, a good trip would be. So we want to take this knowledge we have of traveling and apply it to something, to something totally crazy and new. But we're both super active people. I feel like we're both pretty talented. Uh, Matt has like the greatest luck of anyone ever. He like has a reputation for this. It's true. So, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so, it makes Chris really mad a lot of times. times it makes me so mad. You won't talk to me for a few days. Sometimes it makes me so mad how lucky Matt is. One time we were in Thailand. This is the one I remember. We were playing, we have this card game we play all the time called Shithead. It's like our favorite travel card game. And Matt, it's total luck. There's zero skill involved. There's some skill. Maybe 1% of skill is involved with this game. 10%. Maybe 10% is pushing it. It's mostly luck. And Matt won every time. It was driving me so crazy. We were playing at this little like gazebo in Thailand. We had these little bungalows there. And I got so fed up with Matt winning every time. I, like, I think I like, threw the cards down and just like stormed <laughs> went, went to bed. <laughs> just went to bed. 
because and it's so unfair to Matt because he's not doing anything wrong. Like, he wasn't winning. doing it on purpose. He just wins. So that be I'm very curious to see how that has luck would work out with us on uh, on this adventure, especially with the, the certain competitions. But on the other hand, Chris as my travel partner isn't well I'm famous, I guess you'd say, for being lucky. Chris is notorious for his forgetfulness and ability to lose important things. For a second I thought you were gonna like say something really that I'm really good at, but we can talk about this too. So I do have a very I'm really bad at losing things. That's probably Maybe gonna be our ADD. biggest that's gonna be our biggest setback. Okay, we're here. Back, I was just in South Africa and I lost another MacBook. I've lost two MacBook Airs. I've two, lost two passports. I've lost three GoPros. I lost two passports at the same time because I have two passports. So th that's definitely my drawback. What's yours, Matt? What are you bad at? Let's talk about you. Driving a stick shift. Matt can't drive a stick shift, so I'm gonna so have to teach him how to do that. Don't put me on those challenges. Um, Matt's pretty much good at everything. I'm pretty good at stuff too. I don't know why we had to focus on my negatives, but that's fine. I can handle it. <laughs> on the way to the beach, we might sound different now because I put the GoPro in the water housing so it doesn't get all windy for you guys to listen to. So I know that everyone's probably like going to be looking for a little bit of banter and drama. Who doesn't want drama? Television, reality TV. So now's probably a good time to tell you guys about a little, another little fight that I got in in Asia, in Laos to be specific. There was a lot of alcohol involved, admittedly. And what happened, Matt? I was taking a little, a little nap. I had a few, a few drinks that day. And one of my flaws is, is being very angry when woken up unexpectedly um, or abruptly. So Chris and a few of our British friends storm in the room. Naked. We were naked. They were naked. Yeah. <laughs> And he decided to take his anger out on me by... It's all finished by because I knew Chris the best and I knew he could handle by it. By sneaking up behind me and putting his, wrapping his hands around my neck while I was naked and at my most vulnerable. Which then turned into a very awkward wrestling match. Matt ran off to Bangkok with his newfound love, Frida, who you've already heard about. I didn't, didn't I had to go get my visa approved for Indonesia. We knew it was coming. He was embarrassed because he knew that he acted out of line. But... You know, maybe I just shouldn't have been naked and being mean always asleep. Anyways, we got over it, we're here, and we're ready to move forward. But if you guys are fans of naked fights, beautiful naked men fighting, then it's just one more reason for us to get on this field as well. So here's the deal. A couple young guns, college grads, living on the Outer Banks of North Carolina. We travel a lot, and we're fun. Funny, we're attractive. Um, I mean, why not? My last hurrah. Yeah, that's a valid point to make. Matt's about to be on lockdown for the rest of his life. find some fish, hopefully not find any sharks, hopefully we're going to hear back from you guys, and hopefully we're going to be on your show in the